Hey there folks, Sam Teeth, the Arizona Ghost Riders here. I'm here with Jesse from Old Tombstone Theme Park. How Hi. you doing, Jesse? Good, how are you? Hey, what are you doing with my gun, buddy? Oh, I like a... Uh, it but, feels very uh, nice. Uh, oh, that is awesome. I gotta get out of here, I'm gonna vomit. Now, before you all give me a hard time about me showing off a Peacemaker clone on a Schofield video, this young subscriber, Jesse, stopped me on the way to a show. This talented kid can really spin a revolver. Thanks, Jesse, for keeping the spirit of the Old West alive. I hope to do more videos with him in the future. One of the most popular revolvers used in the settling of the Old West was the Model 3. When Smith & Wesson manufactured it, they landed the contract for the Army, and it was chambered for the 44 Smith & Wesson American cartridge. In 1870, that made it the first standard-issue cartridge-firing revolver in U.S. service. Might not get a chance to use those Schofields, Charlie. A big benefit of these revolvers was the brake top action. This allowed all the spent cartridges to be dumped out in one motion, shortening reloading speeds. And all of them? In 1875, Major George W. Schofield worked with Smith & Wesson to modify the design of the Model 3 to better suit the cavalry. For I have crossed the Rubicon, let the bridge be burned behind me. Okay, George, rein in the drama there, buddy. This firearm was chambered for the 45 Schofield, which was a shorter cartridge than the 45 Colt. Well, those rounds were not interchangeable in all revolvers, so the military adopted the Schofield cartridge as their standard. <laughs> Smith & Wesson also produced three models for the Russian Empire, which used the 44 Russian cartridge. Give me your Schofield. <laughs> Give it to me. Also available was 44 Henry Rimfire, 4440, 3244, 3844. Whew, man, that is a lot of calibers. The Schofield saw use in the Indian Wars as well as the Spanish American War. There are arguments all the time about whether Colt, Remington, or Smith and Wesson revolvers won the West. No revolver meets everyone's needs. I find the Schofield's hammer hard to reach with my thumb, which is why I don't have one. I have two thumbs, one for each of you. Schofield. I meant that I don't have a Schofield. This is just stupid. The standard barrel length was 7 inches, but Wells Fargo and Company purchased surplus models cut down to the more concealable 5 inch for their agents. And just like other firearms manufacturers, custom work was available, like nickel plating and engraving. Many famous Old Westians were known to have carried a Schofield at one point in their careers. Buffalo Bill, the James Brothers, some Texas Rangers, Yep, outlaws and law dogs both understood that this firearm was one to be trusted and feared. White Earp was supposed to have used one at the OK Corral shootout. Sorry, Tombstone movie lovers. It was not a Colt Bunt line. The production of the Schofield ceased in 1878 after a run of 9,000, with the new Model 3 taking its place. But don't let that bother you. Replica Model 3s are manufactured today, if you have the hankering to buy one. It's also nice to see them at reenacting events. Gives you a little variety, you know? Well, folks, thanks for watching. And thanks to those of you who donated to the Pistoleros fundraiser show last weekend. It's much appreciated. They're really trying to keep the spirit of the Old West alive. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on down the trail. <laughs>